Uh, gentlemen, ladies, let me introduce the other commandant uh, in and around Washington, D.C., commandant of the Coast Guard, Admiral Thad Allen. Thank you, Jim, for that kind introduction. Uh, it's a little daunting to share the stage this morning with uh, two people like Gary Ruffhead and Jim Conway. Uh, Gary, your uh, breadth and scope around the world and your expertise in battle space is daunting. Uh, I remember the pride I felt uh, looking at the picture of Jim standing on top of that tank leading the MEF into Baghdad. Uh, your heroes, you've moved from the battle space to leadership, and I'm just really proud to be here with you today. This is a fairly momentous occasion, not only for the reasons that Jake Shuford mentioned, based on how many of you are in the audience, where you come from, and the diversity that is represented here today, but the fact that all the sea services are represented here today with a consensus and a way forward on maritime strategy uh, for this nation. It is not an accident. This is a convergence of ideas. This is a convergence of leadership. This is a platform from which to talk about how to move this nation forward in a very uncertain future, in an era of persistent conflict, irregular conflict, where the next challenge that lays before us is something that may not have happened before and may not be measured. To do that, you need flexibility, agility, adaptability. Those are all hallmarks and characteristics which are embedded in the strategy that was outlined by Admiral Ruffhead. The Coast Guard subscribes completely to this strategy. It reinforces the time-honored missions that we have carried out in this country since 1790. It reinforces the Coast Guard maritime strategy of safety, security, and stewardship. And it reflects not only the global reach of our maritime services, but the need to integrate, synchronize, and act with our coalition international partners to not only win wars, but as Admiral Ruff had said, to prevent wars. Now, your United States Coast Guard is not a large organization, but we are broad in reach. As we meet here this morning, we have Coast Guard patrol boats working with our Navy, Marine, and coalition partners in the Northern Arabian Gulf, maintaining the security of the oil platforms off Umm Qasr. We are working together in the Eastern Pacific aerial surveillance, surface units, drug interdiction teams on Navy, foreign partner, coalition partner platforms, extending the reach, removing drugs from the transit zone before they reach our country and before they reach other parts of the world, including an increasing threat vector of cocaine from South America to Europe. The Coast Guard Cutter Healy one of our three icebreakers just returned from a science mission off the north slope of Alaska related to trying to determine the extent of the United States continental shelf. Very topical deployment given the change of the environment in the Arctic and the challenges that are presented there. It is a new challenge for the Coast Guard. It is consistent with our mission set to be able to extend our reach our competencies, our capabilities, and our capacities into the high latitude areas. But it is also impactful in that it is aligned with this strategy. Working together with our U.S. coalition international partners against new challenges, there is possibly a new choke point being created in this world, and it's called the Bering Strait. We have challenges ahead of us, and I might add, because it's very topical in the United States right now, the Coast Guard supports the other leadership in this country and the administration in our push to ratify the Law of the Sea Treaty. We need to do this. In the conduct of our operations around the globe, the Coast Guard focuses on three things that we think build on our capabilities and our capacities in support of the maritime strategy. One, our global frameworks and governance regimes that help us all 
work better together. The Coast Guard has a leadership position in working with the International Maritime Organization to establish international standards and regimes that allow us to provide governance to what is arguably the last global commons. I will be leading the U.S. delegation to London next month. High on our agenda are long-range tracking initiatives that expand on automated identification systems, which are expanding around the world that make maritime commerce transparent, allow us a higher degree of certainty because we're dealing with known routes, known shipping. We can focus on anomalies and put our efforts where they need to be to disrupt threats as far as we can from our shore. I have to compliment Harry Ulrich and all of his efforts in the Mediterranean to share information among the navies and the coast guards in that area, a true leader in the globe, and we thank you for that, Harry. The next thing was already been mentioned by Admiral Ruffhead, alluded to by Jim Conway, is maritime domain awareness, our ability to understand what's out there, Things like long-range tracking built on international regimes allow us to do that. But beyond that is the ability to share that information in an open environment with low barriers to entry for those who need that information and have the capability to act on that information. And finally, we need to build the operational capabilities, as Admiral Ruff had alluded to, that allow us to be able to be effective and achieve mission effect across a broad spectrum of threats including the enhanced capabilities, humanitarian assistance, disaster recovery, and maritime security. As we move forward, we need to converge our requirements. We need to become interoperable. And here I would submit to you, if the Coast Guard has a unique role to play, it is in this area. We've always considered ourselves a unique instrument of national security. And the reason we believe that is we are maritime, military, multi-mission. But the thing that separates the United States Coast Guard from other agencies and most Coast Guards in the world, we are simultaneously an armed force of the United States, and we are our federal law enforcement agency. We have a dual character that allows us to operate in many venues, both in our capacity as a military service and our capacity as a law enforcement agency. For that reason, when we deal with your, com your countries on a global scale, we necessarily move beyond the traditional relationships, the military to military relationships with the defense ministries. And a good example of that is where the Coast Guards of many countries are located. Many work for the defense ministries, but many are under the Ministry of the Interior, some under public safety, and some under transport. Our ability to interact with those various ministries and departments and countries allows us to perform an integration and a synchronization function as we expand the concepts that are contained in the maritime strategy being discuss discussed here today across the broad spectrum of elements of national power that need to be brought to bear to deal with the challenges we face in the world today. Military operations, kinetic operations, achieve effect, achieve an end, and there has been no better collection of military leaders representing capability and capacity in the entire world than are sitting in this room today. But we know to prevent wars, to ensure peace, we have to move beyond military operations and be able to create and sustain the elements of a civil society. That moves beyond the portfolio of most military organizations. And herein lies what we can bring, not only to the fight and the peace. It's the integration and the synchronization capability to deal with domestic departments and ministries regarding search and rescue, oil and hazmat spill response, illegal migration, counter drug operations, polar operations, so as we move forward, the Coast Guard will continue to be the strong partner to the United States Navy and the United States Marine Corps. We will stand shoulder to shoulder with our shipmates. But hopefully what we will bring to the effort is the ability to move beyond traditional relationships and take the notion of the thousand ship Navy 
and create the thousand ship Navy and Coast Guard maritime services and extend that reach, that integration, that global partnership in defense of the global system that we all need for the prosperity and livelihoods of our country to make a much safer world. So my promise to you as I stand here today, my promise to Admiral Ruffhead, my promise to General Conway, in addition to the fact that we are all very good friends, is that we will work tirelessly in the implementation and the execution of this strategy. Not only because it's the best thing for the Coast Guard, it's the best thing for the sea service of the United States, it is the best thing for the maritime security of our nation, and the best thing that we can do for the maritime security of this world. I thank you very much for being with us this morning, and I think we'd be glad to take questions at this point. Thank you.